Well, hello and greetings. I got a little quick deck tech for you. This one is coming actually from a friend of mine. We play Magic together every so often. This is his deck, not mine. And it's a very fun deck. It's Elish or Elsha of the Infinite, which is uh, two, a blue, a red, and a white. Let's see if I can get this to focus right. Uh, legendary creature, Dijin Monk, has prowess. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast the top card of your library if it's not a if it's a non-creature, non-land card. And you may cast it as though it had flash. This deck, when it goes starts going off, it just goes off. It's crazy. This episode is brought to you by Sweet Tea. Yes, I'm I live in Florida. I'm a Southern boy. I like my sweet tea. <coughs> Okay, so this deck is going to be a deck that he's taken to a competition. <coughs> and we're working on it. So you'll see he's got the regular planes. He's got some islands in here. And he's got some mountains. Um, there's a little math trick I'm going to teach him how to do. <coughs> wow, amazing. Sweet tea got caught. You make sure the mana base is kind of sort of correct. This is He needs help with these. These are the utility lands. Um, some of these are okay. Temple of False God, Exotic Orchard is all right. Boiler Works, Tranquil Cove needs to go away. Monastery is okay. Command Tower is okay. Terramorphic and Evolving Wilds, you really don't need those. Um, Azorius Chancery and Ash Barons. Uh, Prairie Stream, and that's about is, well, okay, Mary. The rest of these need to go. These are all tap lands. Um, some of these can get changed out too. I mean, honestly, uh, I'm going to help them with that one just for the uh, competition because it doesn't make any sense sending them into a competition with tap lands. <coughs> faster your deck, the faster, uh, easier it is to play. Anyways, let's get into this. We're going to start off a little bit. Now, this deck is a little bit different, more different than I am. Since I didn't make this deck, it's it's kind of a, I'm feeling it out. I'm looking at it and seeing how it works. We're going to start off with the instants and sorceries on this one. Grip of Phyresis. Two and a blue. Gain control of target uh, equipment. Then create a zero zero black germ creature token and attach that equipment to it. Not bad. Um, I mean, I guess someone puts out a sword, sword of fire and ice, sort of uh, whatever. You're able to take it. Um, so not a bad card. Fact or fiction. This one's kind of risky, especially going into a competition. But this one's kind of risky because it says reveal top five cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile into your hand, the other into your graveyard. So, yeah. Um, you better hope that the guy that is helping you is not your total, total enemy. Because they're all your enemies anyways. And then, of course, render silent. Great white and blue counter spell. Uh, counter target spell. Its controller can't cast spells this turn. That's awesome. Especially when someone's going off. Sorceries. Let's look at the sorceries. Not many sorceries. Just three sorceries in this one. Trash for treasure. Two and a red. So as an additional cost to crash, as an additional cost to cast trash for treasure, sacrifice an artifact. And then it says return target artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's not a bad card. Yeah. As an additional cost to cast treasure. Yeah. Okay. Um, then of course, divine reckoning. Two and two white. Each player chooses a creature they control. Destroy the rest. Good board wipe. Five and two blue for flashback, so you can cast it twice. Open the vaults. Four and two white. Return all artifact and enchantment cards from all graveyards to the battlefield under their owner's control. This one's dangerous because it says return all artifacts and enchantment cards from all graveyards to their battlefield under their owner's control. So, yeah, better be really careful with that one. Um, yeah. Anyways, let's go on. Uh I broke down the artifacts into a couple of categories. This is the mana rocks. So you got Soul Ring, good staple. Fell Warstone, good staple. Azorius Locket. I mean, three, you get one. It's okay. Azuri, uh, uh, Armillary Sphere, two. Two tap, sacrifice Armillary Sphere. Search library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal them, put them into the hand, and shelf your library. That's yeah, okay. I... Uh, Mycosynth Wellspring. For two, when it comes into play, comes onto the battlefield, put, or put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may search the library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shelf your library. So when it comes in, and then if somebody kills it, what if nobody kills it? Then it just sits there. But yeah. Anyways, you get at least one land. 
Commander Sphere for three. This one's a staple. Add one mana of any color to your commander's ide uh, color identity. Sacrifice Commander Sphere to draw a card. So, yeah, not bad. Is it Lock It? Could be better. We'll leave it at that. We're going to give him some options. A uh, little bit of card draw. Uh, Icor Wellspring. When it comes into Battlefield, draw a card. Staff of Nim. I like this card. For six, at the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card. So you're instantly just getting two cards per turn. Tap it, you can do one to point a damage card creature player. Nivril's Disc. The only card in this entire deck I hate. I hate this card. I hate it. I hate it. But anyways, four uh, comes into play tapped, which is okay. And then, of course, pay one, tap, destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. So it's kind of a, yeah, we're going to blow up the world. Trading Post for four. Yeah, it comes in. It has a whole bunch of... Uh, whole bunch of choices pay one tap it discard your uh, discard a card gain four life pay one tap it pay one life create an oh one white goat creature token Ta uh, one and a tap sacrifice creature return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand and pay one tap it sacrifice artifact draw a card so eh, yeah yeah could be could be better dispeller's capsule uh, uh destroy target artifact or enchantment okay elixir of immortality for one you gain five Shuffle Elixir of Immortality and your graveyard into your owner's library. So, I mean, I guess if you need those last little bits of life. Glass Casket. Now, I'll be honest. I think this one is just beautiful. I mean, it is in foil. I know it's a uh, promo pack, but it is beautiful. For one in a white artifact, when Glass Casket enters battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or less until Glass Casket leaves the battlefield. Chalice of Life. This is a double-sided card. You gain one life, then if you have at least 10 life, uh, more than your starting life total, transform Chalice of Life. This one's dangerous because what if you never get past 40? Because, you know, you have three enemies that are trying to take you down. Anyways, Chalice of Death. Target player loses five life. <clears throat> it's not a bad card, but this competition is going to be slick. But this is a fun deck. I've, I've, he's beaten me a couple of times with this deck. So it's a fun deck to watch him go off on. And pretty much, here's one of the big killers. This is you, you're the prowess. The casting, and yeah, it's just fun to watch it. Timurid Script, everybody knows what it does. And the Scroll of Masters, which is great too. Whenever you cast an on-creature spell, put a lure counter on Scroll of Masters. Pay three, tap a uh, target creature you control. Gets plus one, plus one until I'm turn. For each lure counter on Scroll of Master. So if you got five on there, you're giving this one plus five, plus five. That's awesome. I like it. This next one is, uh, yeah, just artifact creatures. Solemn, Sorlacarum, Sad. It's the Sad Golem. Mirror Retriever. When it dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Mire Sire. For two, you're, you're getting uh, a Sire put into the graveyard from Battlefield. Put a 1-1 one, one colorless artifact creature token onto the Battlefield. So if it dies, you get another one. And then, of course, Shimmer Mirror. Flash, you may cast artifact creatures, though they had Flash. This is nice because if it comes into play, these just can come in at any time. Um, otherwise, they're just kind of utility, uh, you know, artifact creatures that suck. Anyways, um, enchantments, two and one. Monastery Siege. This one did a lot of damage to me the other day when we played... Uh, you choose one, cons or dragons. And if you choose cons, says at the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card, then discard a card. Or if you choose dragons, spells your opponent's cast that target you or permanent you control cost two or more to cast. So this one makes it harder for people to interact with your stuff. And that sucks. Anyways, um, ghostly prison, two and a white. Creature, creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they control. That's attacking you. It's a way of slowing down your opponents from attacking you. It's great. Propaganda. Two and a blue. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they he or she controls. That's attacking you. So it's basically the same thing, um, just in blue. And then, of course, telepathy. Cost one. It's great. This one's from the ninth. Uh, your opponents play with their hands revealed. I played this card in one of my blue decks, and I just because, yeah, it irritates everyone. As soon as you play it, everybody hates you. Everybody hates that card. But there's other cards that are worse to that you want to get off the board before that. So you basically just are playing with your you're, you're playing with your hand revealed, um, except for the person who cast it because they don't have to. Okay, so creatures, trinket mage, go find a go find a 
one of your artifacts that cost one. It basically says, when Trigger Mage enters the battlefield, you may search the library for an artifact card with converted mana cost one or zero or less. Reveal that card, put it into your hand. If you do, shuffle your library. That's two, two for three. Yay. Ithram Sculptor. Artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. That's awesome. And and just so you know, no. Just because if it's a two or a three, and this, it makes it cost one less, you can't use this to go and grab that two. No, you can't do it. It doesn't work that way. Sorry. Sanctum Gargoyle, three and a white. This one I don't understand is why it's here. When Sanctum Gargoyle enters the battlefield, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. It's a two, three, great. It's four drop. Uh, I can think of other cards I'd rather have. Now, this one's okay because it's two and two red. Uh, when P Pia and Nira... Pia? Okay, I can't pronounce it. Enters the battlefield. Put two, one, one. Colorless Thopter artifact creature tokens on the battlefield. Flying onto the battlefield. Pay two and one red. Sacrifice an artifact. Pia and Kieran Nalar deal two damage to target creature or player. Well, that's not bad. Could be worse. But you get three for... You get three creatures, which is graded for it. Uh, Gondo Band Bandit Warlord, five and a red. When Gondo Bandit Warlord enters the battlefield, you may search the library for an equipment card. Put it onto the battlefield. If you do, shuffle your library. When Gondo attacks for the first time each turn, untap it and all samurai you control. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. Which, honestly, it doesn't make sense why it says samurai when it's not a samurai. It's a human barbarian. But, you do get a second uh, attack phase, so combat phase, so that's cool. Chief Engineer, Chief Engineer, one in a blue. Artifact spells you cast have Convoke. That is awesome, and it's one in a three. So it's not a bad card. And then, of course, Hannah Ships Navigator. This is my favorite artwork by Therese Nielsen, my favorite. If I could get a play mat of that, I would. That's my favorite. One white and a blue. Tap it. Return target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Wow, I just literally made that fog up. Or not fog, um, blur up. All right. This part. Look at all these planeswalkers. I mean, granted, I'm not a planeswalker fan. I don't play with a whole lot of planeswalkers in my deck. Um, that's a lot of planeswalkers. I mean, everything from Nihiri... Ugin, Tafiri, uh, Ajani, Chandra, Ajani again, Elspeth, Jace, Durardi, and Ral Zarek. I'm not going to go each through each one of these. Okay, maybe I will. Ral Zarek, two blue and a red. Pit, uh, sorry, comes in as a four. Up them, tap target permanent, then untap another target permanent. Negative two, Ral Zarek deals three damage to target creature. Negative seven, flip five coins, take an extra turn after this one for each coin that comes up heads. Chances are you're not getting too many of those negative sevens. Tahiri, scrap servant, three and a red. Discard up to two target or two cards, then draw that many cards. Uh, negative two, sacrifice an artifact. If you do return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield, negative ten. You get an emblem with whenever this artifact is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. And then, of course, he can be a commander, but why would you do that to yourself? Uh, Johnny, Memory Adept. This one you have to kind of be a little careful of, if I remember right. Three and two blue. It says plus one, draw a card. Target player puts top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. And then, of course, pay zero. Target player puts top ten cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. And of course, negative seven. Any number of target players each draw 20 cards. So that one you better be real careful of. Some people like having cards in your graveyard. My old, my old Drotha deck does. Elspeth, Sun's Champion. Great card. Four and two white. Plus or one. Sorry, plus or up one. Put three one one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. Negative three or destroy all creatures with power four or greater. And then of course, negative seven. You get an emblem with creatures. You control, get plus two, plus two, and have flying. A Johnny. Now, you might have noticed I kind of put these in what I think is from not so bad to the bad one on the bottom. So tell me if I'm wrong, if you think I'm wrong. Two and two white. Uh, plus one, you gain two life. Negative one, put a one, one counter on each creature you control. Uh, those creatures gain vigilance and, until end of turn. Of course, negative six. Put a white avatar creature token onto the battlefield with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the equal to your life total. 
Uh, Chandra's Pyromancer, two and two red. Chandra's Pyromancer deals one damage to each target player and one damage to one target creature that player controls. That creature can't block this turn. And then, of course, negative zero. Exile top card of your library. You may play it this turn. Play it. Play it is better than cast it. Number seven. I'm sorry, negative seven. Exile top ten cards of your library. Choose an instant or sorcery card. Exile this way. And copy it three times. You may cast the copies without paying their mana cost. A Johnny's Vengeant. Two, a red and a white. Uh, target permanent doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. A Johnny's Vengeant. Negative two, uh, la 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 Anyways, negative two, a Johnny deals three damage to target creature or player, and you gain three life. And of course, negative seven, destroy all lands target player controls. That is not a good thing to hear. Teferi, Temporal Archmage, for four, two blue. Look top two cards of your library, put one of them into the hand and the other into the bottom of your library. Negative one, untap up to four target permanents. And then of course, negative seven, you get an emblem with you may activate loyalty abilities of planeswalkers you control on any player's turn, anytime you can, could cast an instant. Not bad. And then of course, Te Teferi can be your commander. Ugin, Ugin the Ineffinable. Colorless spells you cast cost two less to cast. Not bad, that's a static ability. Negative, or sorry, plus one is exile top card of your library face down. Look at it. Create a 2-2 two -two colorless spirit creature token. When that creature, or when that token leaves the battlefield, put the exiled card into your hand. And then, of course, negative three, destroy target permanent. That's one or more colors. And then Nahiri, the Lithomancer. This one scares me because I've actually had it happen to me uh, and by this deck. Three and two white. Put a 1-1 one, one core white soldier creature token on the battlefield. You may search your equipment you control. Sorry, you may attach an equipment you control. Not bad for plus two. It's all my, Now it's a five. You may put, an, sorry, negative two. You may put an equipment card from your hand onto the or, or graveyard onto the battlefield, which is awesome. And then, of course, negative ten. Put a colorless equipment artifact token named Stoneforged Blade onto the battlefield. It has indestructible equipped creature Gets plus five, plus five, and has double strike. And equipped for zero. That is just nasty. That is just nasty. And when that comes into play, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, he has them right here. When that comes into play, it just owns you. Look at that. Indestructible. Equipped creature gets plus five, plus five, and has double strike. And then, of course, equipped for zero. That is just a nasty blade. Um, went through that. Okay, so this is the last, one of the last ones. These are all the uh, equipments. So he has Sword of the Animus to give him plus one, plus one, and help find basic land. Bone Horde, which is a living weapon. It also gets plus X, plus X, where X is the number of car creature cards in all graveyards. Shield of the Avatar, which is nasty. If a, if a source would deal damage to the equipped creature, pre, uh, prevent X of that damage, where X is the number of creatures you control. So that's not bad. Uh, Swift Foot Boots, of course you want Hexproof and Haste. Sword of Vengeance, plus two, plus zero, has First Strike, Vengeance, Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. Masterwork of Ingenuity, for one, you may have Masterwork of Ingenuity. And, excuse me, enter the battlefield of a copy of any equipment on, on the battlefield. The only restriction to this one would be the ones that are legendary. You can't have two legendaries. So that's the only restriction to that one. Ghost Fire Blade. This one's nasty. One has plus two, plus two. And then, of course, when it, when uh, Ghost Fire Blade's equipped, equip ability costs two less to activate if it targets a colorless creature. So it's a plus two, plus two for one. Uh, Bloodthirsty Blade. Two. Equipped creature cost uh, gets plus two plus zero and is goaded. Um, plus one attached bloodthirsty blade to target creature and opponent controls. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. So, and then of course, grafted exoskeleton for four. Your uh, equipped creature gets plus two plus two and has infect. And then when it becomes attached, unattached from a permanent, sacrifice that permanent. So. 
going to have to be careful which one you put that one on. But those are the equipments. And, and basically what you're doing with this deck is you're getting her out. You're casting the spells from the top of the deck as fast as you can because it gets this one. I call her a her because I'm sorry. The gens are hers when they have the, when their horns point down, they're girls. When their horns point up, they're boys. That's how I look at it. Um, you're able to cast the spells because, you know, from the top of the library, which gives it prowess. So it beefs it up. So, of course, you're also putting these into play. Um, you're putting these onto her. So that's just making it stronger. And then you're going to attack. So this is number one primary way of, you know, trying to kill off your opponents. Getting any of these on those other creatures kind of helps out. But these other three are also nasty beat em sticks. Uh, Platinum Angel for seven. Flying, you can't lose the game, and your opponents can't win the game. It's a 4-4, four, four, and that's great when you can put a lot of these other cards on it. For instance, give it Hexproof. Oh, this one I hate. Teferi's Mage of Zalafir for two and three. This just helps this deck out so much. Creature cards you own that aren't in, the, in play have Flash. And then, of course, each opponent can play spells uh, only any time he or she can play a sorcery. That, in and of itself, sucks. Because when that happens and you, you are stuck playing only on your turn, you can't interact with anything on anybody else's deck, it really, really, really hurts. And then, of course, Akiri Lineslinger. I love this card. It's a blue and a red. This one's actually in foil. Um, Core Soldier Ally, Legendary Creature, First Strike and Vigilance. And then, of course, a Kiri line, uh, line Slinger gets plus one, plus zero for each artifact you control. Has partner, but who cares? It's the plus one, plus zero at each artifact you control. And of course, First Strike and Vigilance. So it doesn't matter what artifact it is. It gets plus one, plus zero. And then, of course, these are just going to boost it up. So this is a great card, too. That's his deck. I am going to help him out with a couple of things. That I think, uh, but I'm going to ask him. I'm not going to just assume that he, you know, and keep his cards. I'm going to ask him and uh, let me know, Mike, what you think of of my assistance. And hopefully during this uh, competition that we go to, you do pretty well. I'm not going to help you with like this. I'm going to help you with some of the lands because the lands you need, and maybe some of these. But we'll talk to later. I'll show you what kind of what kind of things I'm talking about and. Uh, this is a very fun deck. I've seen him destroy me with it. So we'll go from there. Um, give me one second. Oh, I'm back. And let's take a look here. These are my staples, by the way. You knew that, though. Might have to help a little bit with the landfall. This is my staples, by the way. It's a uh, the cards that I you can put in just about any commander deck. Um, three for one isn't the greatest. So what we're looking for is I found that signet. A two for one is better. A two for one will always be better. I think, I don't remember if you already had that one in there. We will see. And like I said, I'm just going to offer if he wants to use these. He 
is more than welcome to. We're going to a competition which is going to uh, have a big prize. So we kind of want to get as close to that big prize as possible. That one's dangerous. Not so dangerous. Mole drifter, not a bad one. <clears throat> See, there's my one of my telepathies. Hmm. I didn't have any other signets. Then I could let him use. Oh well. No. All right. Well, anyways, I'll ask him if he wants to use these. Yeah. So he had opened the vaults. Four and two. This is open the armory. Um, this this will help him find stuff. This one won't. So. We'll see if he wants to use these couple of cards. Uh, if you have any suggestions, also leave them down below. Very much appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up button, and uh, we'll talk to you later. And by the way, leave a comment down below. I'd love to, uh, love to hear from people. Have a great day.